Hello everyone, this is James Braithwaite right here at Braithwaite Physiotherapy in Toronto and today we're going to talk about a great topic that I don't talk about enough in this blog and that is flexibility. And flexibility has an interesting set of myths associated with it that are numerous and we're going to talk mostly about one, a little bit about another uh, today in this video. The little bit about another piece is that age-old myth that you have to do stretching before you warm up for a uh, some kind of sporting activity and that that will help to prevent injury during that activity. I think most people now at this point kind of understand that that is a myth and in fact there's lots of science uh, bearing out that that is not in fact true. Not that stretching is bad but it's just the science shows that it doesn't necessarily help to prevent injury if done before a sporting event. The best thing that you can do before your sporting event to prevent injury is just a dynamic warm up, eight to 12 minutes, starting from zero to about activity level of intensity. Do that over a period of about 12 minutes, everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Now, that's not to say that flexibility isn't useful. Of course it is useful. It's useful because if you wanna execute good physical athletic activity, you have to have the range of motion at your joints to execute that physical activity. A great example is a baseball pitcher needs to have external, ro like range of motion and external rotation at their shoulder to crank into the wind up of a pitch. Obviously I'm not a baseball pitcher so I won't do too many demonstrations of that, but you can just imagine needing a lot of that external rotation to pitch a 100 mile an hour fastball. So flexibility is relevant. Now, do we need to do stretching to achieve that flexibility? And this is the second interesting um, myth and amb ambiguous um, sort of uh, area that we're going to address in this video because the science says not necessarily. We may not need to do stretching exclusively. There are other ways that you can get quality improvements in range of motion and flexibility at a joint um, besides doing stretching. So what else can we do? And the happy answer to that is strength training. So. Let's take another example. Let's take an example of, say, a ballet dancer or a football kicker. Let's see, we take our football kicker and she needs to kick the football, punting down the, uh, the field. She needs to have a lot of hip flexion range of motion, which me means she needs to have flexibility in her hamstrings muscles. Now, we could go and do static stretching or even contract relax stretching uh, for uh, and add on quite a bit of time onto our typical workout, and that's fine. The research does show that that works. You'll get range of motion improvements from doing that. But did you also know that strength training um, it, that includes activity through the range of motion that those hamstrings act on, like say in a deadlift exercise, will also help to improve range of motion? Let me demonstrate. So if I take a weight like this, uh, this eight kilo, no, it's a 12 kilo kettlebell. I'm gonna do a deadlift exercise. So a deadlift looks like this. And I really, as I push my pelvis backwards, you can see how I lengthen out through all that musculature at the back side of my thigh, this stuff back here, namely my hamstrings. So if I'm executing my deadlift through full range of motion, I will A, first feel my hamstrings load and tighten up at the bottom of the movement as they reach their end of range, and B, I'll get some nice strengthening out of it too. So as I feel those length tighten up and at the bottom of range, I know that I'm at the end of their um, flexible range of motion. So it turns out that the science is showing that executing strength training like this through full range of motion, so not this stuff, oh, I'm working out, working out, doing good, no. No, we need to go through full range of motion like this. It's better for strength gains, better for flexibility gains. So execute your full range of motion, and the science is now, there's a, lot, a large body of science showing that, hey, this will also help with your range of motion just as well as static stretching will. Isn't that cool? And that applies across all uh, muscles. So you can do it there. You can do it, if you're doing a biceps curl, you want to stretch out your, your biceps. You can do a full range of motion biceps curl as well. None of this, oh, I'm working up, I'm working up. No, go through your full range of motion to lengthen out your biceps. Doesn't matter, you pick your exercise that's appropriate for your uh, range of motion that you need to improve. If you're unsure of that, then you have a chat with your physiotherapist, like myself or Vanessa here at uh, Braithwaite Physiotherapy. We can definitely help you with that. Um, try this one though. If you're looking to gain range of motion, try doing some full range of motion strength training as an alternative or in addition to your typical stretching routine. I think you'll happily find that it works out quite nicely for you. If you have 
uh, want to know more information about this, check out the link to the blog article that I've written, which has lots of citations. If you want to go check out some of the science yourself, you can take a look at that too. So the link to that blog art article will be in the description below the video. So take a look at that too. And until next time, have fun with some strength training for range of motion, and we'll see you next time.